I will be making a very quick announcement in Spanish regarding simultaneous interpreting available for today's session. Si usted desea escuchar la presentación de hoy traducida de manera simultánea del inglés al español, puede eh, tomar los siguientes pasos. Si está usando una computadora, usted va a buscar un globo en la parte de abajo de la pantalla, oprima el globo y seleccione servicios de interpretación y el idioma. Usted seleccione el idioma español para poder escuchar la presentación traducida al español. Si tiene un teléfono celular, tiene que aplastar los tres puntitos, seleccionar servicios de interpretación y después también seleccionar el idioma español para poder escuchar todo traducido al español. También, cuando estén los salones divididos, los diferentes salones, por favor, ponga su nombre en la cajita del chat si usted desea entrar a un salón donde la presentadora o el presentador hable español. Gracias. Okay, I'm going into the Spanish room now. Great, okay. Thanks, Vicente. Um, for those of you who didn't hear, um, there'll be a separate room for a Spanish translation. So anyone who's interested in hearing this in Spanish, um, you can join Vicente. Um, my name is Laura Kenny. I'm the senior planner in the planning and zoning office. We've been working on this industrial waterfront land use study with UTIL. Um, you'll hear more from their team in a little bit, but uh, this study is a follow-up study um, to the industrial zone study, which some of you may have um, participated in the public meetings for. Um, this is the first public meeting for the waterfront portion of the study. So we're eager to hear everyone's opinion. Um, we'll be presenting different scenarios today uh, with different locations within the study area. So everyone can share their feedback in a location-based way. Um, just wanna make sure everyone's muted during the meeting. Um, but when we, go into breakout rooms, you're welcome to share your opinion and we're eager to hear what you have to say. You're also welcome to uh, send an email with any additional comments that you didn't get to send today. And we'll have additional public meetings on the topic. So today won't be the end of it. Uh, Wanna welcome Zoe and give her the floor. Hey, thank you, Laura. Um, so I will get us started here just to get us oriented to the plan and then we'll dive into the, the meat of today's presentation. Um, but first, just uh, as an introduction, my name is Zoe Mueller. Uh, I'm an urban planner um, and I'm working with UTIL and the project manager for this project um, consulting for the city of Norwalk. So I'm not alone. I, I have a team here that's um, sort of helping to shepherd this plan um, sort of through the process. Um, so you'll see here uh, Tim, as well as Will and Lisa and Gabriel. They're all be gonna be helping to facilitate um, the breakout room discussions later on in the meeting and have been sort of involved in various ways throughout. We also have Kevin Hively, who is um, our economic development consultant. So he's um, not here today, but has been advising us throughout the process. As a team, we've um, conducted a lot of um, waterfront planning studies in particular with a focus on industrial areas. Um, so you can see here sort of the broad range of, of the work that we have done that we sort of bring here to Norwalk to kind of um, focus in on the, the real complexity of urban waterfronts in particular urban waterfronts that can contain and sort of support industrial uses. For the agenda today, um, we're, you know, we're in the sort of welcome phase here. Um, I will briefly go over some background and context to sort of add to what Laura's already shared. Um, and then we'll jump into some initial land use scenarios. Um, we're gonna have live polling as part of that portion of the meeting. So that will enable you to sort of in real time provide feedback to us on your preferences. Um, and then we'll go into a breakout group discussion for about 30 minutes um, to sort of cover a range of topics really to give you the chance to sort of give us more um, sort of personalized feedback, things that are um, sort of on your mind that you'd like us to consider or any sort of 
um, adjustments or um, things that you think we've missed in what we presented so far today. Um, and then we'll finally close out the meeting and um, talk about next steps for the process. So to give you a sense of kind of the, the origins of this study, like Laura described, um, and a little bit of our sort of purpose and profit process, um, this is sort of uh, one element of really a, like a multifaceted range of plans that are underway and sort of helping to shape the future of Norwalk. So this is um, one of four studies that are all kind of filtering up to inform the citywide zone Norwalk effort. Um, and that will be a comprehensive rezoning for all of the districts throughout Norwalk. Um, additionally, sort of in tandem with that, um, there are several different um, sort of plans underway that are shaping the sort of future for infrastructure and capital investments. So that includes the transportation master plan, as well as parks and rec uh, master plan and uh, the Harbor Loop plan, which the Redevelopment Authority is spearheading. So all of these kind of interlock with each other in different ways. The important thing for you to kind of have in mind is that this study will ultimately inform those sort of, um, those larger planning efforts. So it's sort of filtering up. Um, the, the plan that this is most intimately sort of interconnected with is what Laura had mentioned, which is the, the Norwalk Industrial Zone study. Um, which we completed recently um, and will be out, um, the final draft will be out shortly. Um, this is really an effort to um, take the sort of current, the 14 districts that allow industrial use throughout the city of Norwalk um, and really streamline it um, and make it sort of ready for 21st century industrial uses. Um, so what that means is really it's, we simplified all of that down to sort of four fundamental districts that carry different sort of land use mixes um, and dimensional guidelines. And that really sets Norwalk up to um, have a clearer approach to economic development and to sort of um, be ready for the new types of industrial uses um, that are part of our sort of development reality today. So the way that this plan sort of plugs into that is that we are really focused on the waterfront. The waterfront is an incredibly complex sort of area that um, sort of needed some additional study beyond the sort of citywide industrial zone study that we had done before. Um, so we're extending that Norwalk industrial zone study to the waterfront context with the same goals in mind. Our, our goals are to um, streamline and modernize industrial zoning to preserve and enhance character, improve quality of life and promote economic development. Um, so ultimately what we're sort of looking to develop through this process is a vision um, something that can guide policy change, um, something that can inform economic development strategy and initiatives, and ultimately um, also identifying capital investments in collaboration with the other ongoing um, initiatives that were mentioned previously. In terms of our study area, our focus is really um, what's seen here in the dark blue parcels. Um, the lighter blue parcels are sort of an influence area, so we're taking those into account as context, but we're not proposing changes in those areas. Um, and then obviously the, the park um, portions of their study area are expected to remain as parks. We don't expect any change there. Um, we're really just including them for, for sort of contextual um, analysis. And you can see kind of broadly speaking, we're looking at um, all of the property that is sort of from the first inland road all the way to the water. So that's really our focus for this, um, this plan. The current zoning in this area is really varied, which reflects the fact that the waterfront itself is quite varied. Um, so you can see here, it runs the gamut from the sort of um, uh, the marine commercial all the way through to the heavy industrial, mixed use, residential, um, it's really a, a wide variety of different land uses. Um, going forward, um, as part of this Norwalk Industrial Zone study, the intention is to um, streamline that, simplify it a little bit. Um, and you can see here that a lot of the former sort of mixed use areas become this mixed use artisan. Um, and you have some sort of lighter industrial zoning that sort of helped to buffer and sort of um, make the transition to residential districts here. In terms of the planning process, we're right here with the first public meeting. There's actually been quite a bit of process so far in terms of stakeholder outreach um, and just sort of a review of um, the sort of plans, existing conditions. Um, and so we are right now in this sort of rich phase of scenario development, sort of exploring different alternatives for the future of Norwalk's waterfront. 
um, as a follow-up to this meeting, once we have all the, the feedback from you all and then subsequent feedback um, beyond this public meeting, we'll be taking that um, back to sort of filter into a preferred um, sort of land use future um, that we will then detail out, you know, in terms of the zoning, in terms of economic development, what that might mean for the city. Um, so this is a really um, important point for us to get um, feedback from you all. So we're looking to hear from you about um, key transition areas, um, sort of places where you see there's like tension or conflict where we can sort of make some um, headway on finding solutions, ways to sort of manage that tension between just um, adjacent land uses. Um, we'll look at the land use scenarios and get your sort of ranking of what you prefer. Um, we'll discuss in the, the breakout groups. And then finally, we have some development test fits to share that are, um, really just getting a little bit more granular looking at sort of the specific um, building typologies that might fit in these different districts and, and thinking through um, how the zoning can support those. So with that, I'm going to share very briefly um, a bit about the study area character. Obviously, uh, many of you are very familiar with this, but I'll just share some highlights so we all have kind of the same foundation. Um, so similar to before, the way I highlighted, there's a really a varied land use across this whole district. Um, the flood zone um, is sort of an important aspect of planning in this area. Um, it goes pretty far inland in some areas, um, uh, sort of surrounding here. Um, and really, you can see here that this is like just such a rich variety of different uses. So you have um, sort of marinas, boat, boat clubs, um, seafood, uh, the ferry aquarium, um, some heavy industrial um, public services, as well as um, recreational rowing um, and really critical sort of economic development drivers, um, the Divine Brothers and King Industries um, that are sort of heavy industrial users along the waterfront that have been here for generations. So this is just, um, we've been so enjoying getting to know your waterfront and the sort of surprises around every corner. <laughs> um, just to kind of give a feel for it, um, the sound here will sort of uh, bleep me out, but um, this is just to give a sense of the sort of dynamism of the waterfront. You know, there's just um, so much going on um, and uh, everything from institutional and tourism to water dependent industrial, recreational, residential, parks and open space, commercial marinas. Um, so this is really a big part of this plan is about sort of understanding that mix and figuring out ways to um, sort of carry that to the future in, in ways that sort of manage the inherent conflict when you have such a diversity of uses. And then finally, um, just to sort of get a sense of the sort of active areas of the waterfront, the um, parcels highlighted here are the ones that actively are using the water, whether for industrial, recreational, um, or sort of other boating uses. Um, so you can see that there's, you know, a lot of activity right at the mouth um, of the uh, river and then um, quite a bit sort of all the way far in towards Wall Street um, and sort of peppered all the way throughout. So it's a really actively used waterfront. Hey Zoe. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, we just had a comment um, from someone asking that we clarify that the map while on our computer screens is horizontal is actually representative of the north to south scale. Um, so for anyone who yes. might be a little bit disoriented, uh, just want to jump in and clarify that. Absolutely, thank you for doing that. Yes, that, apologies, that is always um, disorienting. It's a, the only way we can get this study area fit on a slide. So <laughs> um, thanks for bearing with us. I know that it's uh, a little bit um, discombobulating. So for all of these maps, north will be to the right of the screen. So it's just yeah, and, that, that's, in and like that's this. to make the, the maps as big as possible for presentation so that you can see more. You know, when you make it true north-south, the scale of the map has to be smaller. Thanks for clarifying that, Laura. Um, so in terms of additional um, sort of initial engagement takeaways, um, first, just to mention, we have a really great steering committee that's really helping us to um, sort of guide this study. So they've been providing really detailed feedback throughout the process so far, um, and really have been helping to, um, you know, make sure that we're getting it right. Um, in addition to that steering committee, we have done a large amount of um, stakeholder outreach. We understand there's a lot of active businesses and property owners in this area. And so it's really just trying to get a handle on some of the key issues from the perspective of the people who are using the water 
um, sort of regularly who are property owners along the water. Um, so you can see here that we had 19 meetings with a total of um, 58 stakeholders engaged, um, coordinating with nine different um, sort of city of Norwalk staff um, and sort of did that over a concentrated period from September to November of this past year. We also did a, um, to sort of kick the project off, we, we um, uh, came to Norwalk to sort of have a, um, a more detailed view of, of what's going on on the ground. So some of the things that we heard, um, a lot of uh, interest in water quality and flood resiliency, um, a couple of sort of nuisance flooding areas um, and a need for sort of better stormwater management, um, an interest in improved recreation and hospitality network. Um, I'm gonna, just for the interest of time, I'm gonna go through these pretty quickly, but you can see that there's um, sort of a lot of detail to what we heard from people. Um, there are some concerns around the street network with vehicle, bike, and pedestrian conflicts, um, in particular around the sort of bridges, which are kind of natural pinch points in the network. Um, city services facility planning um, has a, a sort of an important role to play on the waterfront. They already have, a, you know, occupy a large area and, and have sort of, you know, needs going into the future. There's also some kind of uh, areas of debate, contention or anxiety where the people had sort of differing opinions. So um, looking at economic development infrastructure needs, um, some questions around dredging, the walk bridge um, and sort of local versus regional economic development. Um, some sort of uh, questions around um, to what degree we preserve and protect the existing pattern versus transitioning the use mix um, over time and sort of different visions for waterfront growth and public access. And then beyond the stakeholder engagement, we've also done um, some public uh, engagement on as both online and in person um, through sort of our initial phase of interactive mapping. Um, this was an opportunity to hear people's general comments, ideas and suggestions, things that they liked and disliked. Um, we overall got 158 comments from 56 unique um, participants. Um, and overall, um, over 3,000 visits were made to the sort of the web version of this. There's a lot of sort of um, visibility for people to kind of understand what we're, what we're working on. And out of that, um, we saw that a lot, the vast majority of what the, the sort of the public participants wanted to um, discuss and sort of bring up were related to public access and open space. So this is clearly a big um, sort of issue that people are concerned about, want to see sort of, um, you know, what's, the, what are the plans for the future? Um, there's also, uh, there was also a fair amount of interest and engagement about infrastructure needs. Um, so interest in flooding, stormwater, um, sidewalks, paths and trails, um, the docks. Um, and then finally, not very many people, but some people did also have comments about land use um, and zoning. So that was sort of the, the sort of least common of, among the public comments that we received, but um, we heard loud and clear that public access and open space is something that people are really wanting to see progress on. So finally, um, we're gonna share with you um, our sort of initial ideas about some different scenarios for the waterfront. Um, this is really right now, we're focusing really on land use. Um, there will be aspects of, you know, as we move forward where we'll, we will incorporate more specifically about public access. Um, we are for now deferring to the sort of ongoing planning effort um, by the Norwalk Redevelopment Authority um, to sort of shape that future, which we will then incorporate into our plan. Um, and they have an upcoming public meeting on February 9th, I believe, so keep an eye out. So with that, this is sort of, as we stand currently, this is sort of the intended public access network. Um, so this is what's sort of actively being shaped by the Norwalk Redevelopment Authority. Um, and uh, this is sort of something that we'll be incorporating, regardless of the land use future, we'll be incorporating public access as part of that. For our land use scenarios, we sort of broke our work into five different districts. So um, there's the broader Marina District, um, the uh, Washington Street and Oyster Shell Park District, the Industrial CBD Transition District, um, the East Bank Industrial Mixed Use Transition, which sort of carries over to here, and then finally the Mini Industrial Marina District. So before we get into the scenarios, I actually want to um, launch some sort of more like bigger picture polls that kind of will give us a sense of who's in the room, 
um, and also a little bit about what priorities you sort of carry with you coming into the, the planning process. So um, Michelle, if you're able to um, launch our first poll, actually, I can probably launch it as well. Sure. Well, Okay, so you will have a little thing pop up on your screen. Um, and we are asking you um, two questions here. The first is just about your relationship to the study area. So this is like, are you a resident? Are you a resident that lives in walking distance of the study area? Um, and you can check more than one if more, more than one of them are true for you. And then we're also asking for your zip code. And this just really helps us understand, you know, geographically, all of you who are here tonight, you know, where are you coming from? How might that shape your perspective and what you're kind of looking for from the city? Um, just helps us to understand um, more about, you know, how to interpret the feedback that we get. We won't be using it to like send you mailings or anything. <laughs> I'm gonna give just a few more minutes for people to participate. Probably goes without saying, but you know, consultant team and city uh, don't, don't respond. <laughs> So we can go ahead and close it out in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, and we'll share the results back to you so you can see kind of who's here and um, you know what what's our spread. So we have a lot of um, Norwalk residents who are within walking distance of the study area and also a lot of recreational users of the study area. Um, beyond that, there's quite a few um, Norwalk residents who live beyond that sort of walking distance buffer, property and business owners, um, and uh, workers that are within walking distance of the study area. And then in terms of zip code, it looks like um, majority from the Southeast area of Norwalk and um, sort of Western Norwalk. We'll stop sharing and then we'll do one more poll before we jump into the scenarios. Um, the next one is just about kind of your top issues. So things that are priorities for you, issues you'd like to see this plan address. Um, and you can see here, we've kind of, we have quite a few. Um, so the first is around jobs. Um, the second, uh, water dependent uses, services, public funding, development, beautification, active transportation, public access, resiliency, and ecology. And a lot of these things, of course, overlap with one another to some degree. In some cases, they're in conflict with one another, depending on the site. Um, but these are really the, these issues that we have listed here are really what came out from the public input and the stakeholder input that we've heard so far, that these are kind of the things that were recurring um, items that people mentioned and so we want to get a, a pulse on kind of um, which ones are really top of mind and which ones maybe are uh, slightly less of a priority for different people. Just a reminder to everybody to scroll down before you choose. I think some people are missing that the poll, at least on my screen, drops down further. The, the choices drop down further than the window. Yeah, thanks for that. It's, it's quite a few. There's a lot of issues, guys, that are, everybody had a lot, a lot to say so far. So <laughs> it's a long list but we'll make sense of it. Okay, we're at pretty good um, percentage here. So we'll do five, four, three, two, one. And we will close the poll and share back to you. So looks like um, the top one is um, beautification. Uh, that's looking at sort of buffering, improved curb appeal, enhanced public spaces. Um, after that, public access, ecology, and resiliency all were um, priorities. And then also a significant interest in water dependent uses and sort of retention and expansion of water dependent uses and dredging. Great, thank you all for, um, for sharing that with us. So I will, um, 
I'll now kind of walk you through the first um, of these districts and we'll do kind of a, a poll afterwards. So just as a reminder, each of these scenarios um, right now, we're really focusing on land use, but um, as we come back for the second public meeting with sort of a preferred land use scenario, we'll be getting into some of the details around public access, public realm, capital investment, um, issues around flood resiliency and water quality. Um, we've heard loud and clear that that's sort of a, an issue that needs to be addressed. Um, we'll also be looking at more closely at sort of economic development and fiscal strategy around these different land uses. Um, and finally, of course, the, the rezoning itself. So the first one that we wanna talk about with you is the broader marina district. Um, we sort of organize these around sort of central questions for each of them. So for the broader marina district, um, we are really interested in um, understanding better how land use policy could help to create um, an amenity rich broader marina district experience that is greater than the sum of its parts. Um, and a big part of that is sort of thinking through how do we connect the water dependent commercial uses to the Washington street corridor amenities and how do we do that in a way that's sort of mutually beneficial so it's helping to retain grow invest in the marine um, water dependent uses and it's also helping to sort of enhance the experience and connection with the neighboring um, neighboring districts. So just to kind of as a refresher, the current zoning in this area, um, the bulk of it is marine commercial. That's sort of the iconic strip along Water Street. Um, there's also a sliver of sea residents, um, which is one of the residential districts um, that sort of borders it. Um, and then across the way, there's um, Triple A residence, which also doubles as sort of an open space district, um, neighborhood business right here, and then the Washington Street Design District, which is a really sort of customized mixed use district that's focused on the Washington Street area. So this is kind of the base condition. This is what we have right now. Um, and looking forward, um, you know, we really wanted to dive into a little bit of the nitty gritty of the marine commercial. Um, so I'm going to kind of walk you through um, some ideas about development in the marine commercial area um, just to sort of help ex sort of explore some of the, the opportunities that we're um, interested in in this area. So the main thing here is that this, this whole district is structured around retaining and sort of protecting water dependent um, commercial uses. And so you can see here that all of the as of right uses, so the things you can build based on the zoning without needing special permissions um, are all water dependent uses. So marinas, docks, ports, fish processing plants, shipyards, marine repair, um, marine police, harbor master, waterfront clubs. So these are all classic you know, water dependent uses. Additionally, even in the current zoning, you have the ability to build all of these other land use types. Um, but they are all by special permit. So you have to get special permission to do it. Um, and so our question was, you know, if these are all allowed currently, why are we not seeing more of those as sort of supporting or, or sort of additional uses to complement the primary marine industrial um, or uh, sort of marine commercial uses? Um, and before doing that, we wanted to kind of um, sort of take stock of, you know, what are some of the current sort of design principles and, and sort of um, public benefits that um, any development in this area needs to take into account. So one of them is just retaining a connection to the water. So sight lines from Water Street um, that sort of, uh, you know, look right towards the water. Um, the next is sort of improvements to Water Street itself, sort of thinking about that over the long term, what can it do in terms of resiliency, in terms of bike and pedestrian infrastructure, in terms of sort of a um, active ground floor um, public realm. And then finally, um, the sort of at a macro level, the sort of what can this district, how can this district contribute to improve water quality? Um, what's realistic that can happen in the context of this district? So those are kind of some of the bigger issues that we're kind of, we have in mind. Um, and then what we did was we basically sort of typologized um, sort of the parcels that exist in this district and sort of looked at there's sort of a typology that's like this, the narrow site that's a long and skinny site that goes all the way from Water Street to the water itself. Um, and then there's quite a few that are kind of like, um, sort of what we call like a double wide or a, a wider site that's sort of almost like a, a two of the narrow. So um, we did this so that we can explore kind of like what kind of development could happen along Water Street that would sort of enhance the experience along Water Street 
but would ultimately be supportive of and sort of help to, um, you know, incentivize reinvestment and sort of retention of the primary water dependent industrial use. So that's kind of what we're exploring is what, what could go here that would be sort of mutually beneficial. Um, so this is kind of the, the sort of most um, uh, sort of maxed out scheme that we explored. This is a um, sort of a retail ground floor that would allow for things like a sandwich shop, a tackle and bait shop, um, things that might be supportive and complementary to the marine industrial, marine commercial uses, um, and then sort of seeing what upper floors um, could support to sort of help to round out the development and make it, um, make it profitable. Um, we also looked at the same typology um, for uh, the sort of uh, wide site and similarly for the narrow site. Um, so looking at sort of the same formula um, based on different uh, sort of parcel typologies. And what we really found from this, um, sorry, before I move on, um, this is looking at the, the same sort of ground floor condition, but looking at upper floors being office versus residential. So this is another way that this development could be conceived of to sort of round it out. Same thing, wide parcel and skinny parcel. So with that, the sort of the scenarios here are designed to sort of explore to what degree we take advantage of that sort of potential development. Um, this is development that um, would help to sort of stitch together Water Street with the Washington Street corridor and sort of create um, uh, some, some opportunities for revenue generation that would sort of um, help to solve the, the puzzle of how all these different pressures that are on the marine commercial district. So the resiliency pressures, the um, sort of infrastructure needs and um, just sort of the, the long-term investment needs to kind of keep these businesses healthy. Um, so the first scenario is sort of the most conservative. So this is really just retaining the current conditions, having the zoning really align directly with the current land uses. Um, so you see here, the, the Marine Commercial District has expanded slightly here to encompass the area that um, is zoned for residential, but is being used for Marine Commercial currently. Um, you see this area here between the Walk Bridge and um, the uh, Washington Street Bridge or the, the Route 136 Bridge, um, retaining the sort of uh, open space there currently, that's Constitution Park. Um, but looking at sort of repurposing the current um, sort of staging area for the walk bridge as future marine commercial, lining it with mixed use artisan, um, which is sort of like a, a classic mixed use um, you know, zoning district, but allowing for um, sort of boutique industrial, like a jeweler or a um, sort of leather goods, um, things like that, that might be um, welcome in a retail environment. The next um, scenario here would be incorporating some of those development test fits that I showed earlier, just in the first sort of 240 feet off of Water Street here. Um, so seeing here where this pink strip is, that that would be the sort of the zone in which that type of development could occur. Um, and it would really be structured uh, to ensure that you could only take advantage of that additional sort of development by um, if you sort of met these other uh, metrics of retaining the water dependent primary use, providing public access and retaining view corridors and making resiliency improvements. Um, so this, this scheme would basically include more of a buffer um, for the, uh, the residential area, sort of activate water street a little bit more with sort of mixed use development um, and then you know, expand the marine commercial a little bit here and line it with mixed use artisan. The next two scenarios are really just playing around with the, the ingredients here. So this one is looking at this little um, area as uh, a potential overflow for heavy industrial public services here that's happening right adjacent um, and that may need additional land. Otherwise, it's all the same. And then finally, in this um, version, that space is repurposed as uh, public open space. Um, so not commercial development, public open space, and otherwise, again, remains the same. So with that, we'll um, launch a poll to kind of get your, your thoughts. Um, there, these are the sort of the four scenarios that we're um, offering, the first being pretty much as is conditions, the second being um, sort of allowing a little bit more um, of the sort of buffering around the edges with the prioritized, 
prioritizing mixed use artisan. Um, the third one would incorporate that little pocket of um, public service industrial area. And then the final one would be to increase open space in addition to doing all those other items. And then if you keep scrolling down on the poll, um, there's sort of a similar question to the, the one that we asked just before we jumped into this. So we're interested in understanding if you had one public benefit that you could prioritize for this area, what would that public benefit be? It's the same list that you saw before. I'll give you a, a fair amount of time because I know this is a, <laughs> um, a, a meaty question and one that's close to a lot of your hearts. So give you time. Zoe, do you mind cycling through the scenarios again while people are voting? It might be helpful. Sure. So here's the first one. Yeah. And this is sort of the more or less as is condition. Second one introduces that um, lining along Water Street. The third one. Um, introduces this heavy industrial public service area. And then the fourth one um, uses that instead for open space. So maybe do another five seconds, give you a little countdown, five, Four, three, two, one. Okay, so we'll end the poll and share it back to you. So we're looking at the first one, um, the scenario question. It looks like the, um, the one that people were most interested in was scenario four, which um, included the sort of, um, let me actually just cycle back to it. This one here, which includes the um, uh, conversion to open space here and um, buffering along um, Water Street to sort of create that mixed use environment um, in support of the marine commercial. Um, the runner up was um, scenario two, which um, involved the same sort of formula, but using this space here um, for a marine commercial. And then in terms of the public benefit that people most wanted to see in this prioritized for this area, um, the water, the retention and expansion of water dependent uses and dredging was the public benefit that people wanted to see prioritized. Um, coming sort of runner ups to that would be jobs, uh, beautification, active transportation and ecology. So I will stop sharing the um, the poll results and jump into the next district. So that one was by far the most complicated of all of these. So thanks for uh, hanging in there with us. <laughs> um, so this next district is, um, a lot of it is public access currently. Um, and it's also home to the um, aquarium. Uh, and so it all has a sort of pretty unified character currently. Um, the sort of the land use question that we wanted to explore in this area um, was how can we activate the ground floor spaces that are facing the water um, and help to create a more dynamic and cohesive public experience from Washington Street north along the water. Um, so really looking at the connection here coming under the um, walk bridge um, and sort of understanding this as sort of a continuous public experience and wanting to make sure that it's really activated by the ground floor spaces. So right now, this whole district has really customized um, zoning that um, was sort of designed to create that sort of um, shared public experience um, and included a lot of great um, design guidelines. Um, so the 
the sort of zoning questions here are less about whether sort of the mix of uses um, and design guidelines uh, are appropriate, but more about what can we do to sort of further support what's here. Um, so one scenario is basically kind of um, formalizing some of the current conditions, which would involve sort of zoning this for um, public institutional uses only. Um, so ensuring that this retain remained part of the sort of a public facing waterfront um, and sort of leaving this as sort of a, um, a customized uh, mixed use district. Um, and then uh, sort of prioritizing this as open space, which is what it is currently. The second scenario um, is a really subtle change. Um, it's only really um, uh, tweaking the sort of the use mix for the buildings that currently sort of face on North Water Street. Um, introducing the option for them to include in their ground floor sort of tenant spaces, um, some uh, artisan industrial uses. So you can think of like I mentioned before, like a jewelry shop or a leather goods place. Um, you also sometimes see like a small like um, a bakery or things that you know you might want, enjoy seeing in a normal retail environment, but are technically industrial uses. Um, so this would sort of increase the land use flexibility and help um, sort of ensure a, a broader range of tenants that can go into these spaces to activate them. Um, so with that, we will launch um, our poll for this one. This one's obviously a much, much a simpler question, but um, still an important one. So you'll see kind of the same structure here. So the first question um, is asking you which of those two scenarios um, you think is the best fit for the city. So the scenario one being more or less as is, just sort of codifying what's there currently. And scenario two is introducing the option for um, artisan industrial on sort of as a ground floor use. Um, for the second question, same thing as before, select one of these options, the public benefit that you would like to prioritize in this area, if you could only choose one. I'll give you a little bit of time to digest this. We were at just over half. Take a little bit more time for people to submit. Okay, we can go ahead and close it in uh, five. Four, three, two, one. We'll share the results back. Looks like there is a slight preference for scenario two, which was introducing um, the option for artisan industrial. And then in terms of the public benefits, um, there was a pretty even spread across quite a few of them. Looks like um, beautification was a priority for a lot of people. Um, ecology was also a priority for a lot of people. Um, and then a sort of uh, spread out between jobs, water dependent uses, development, and resiliency, sort of the next tier of answers. Stop sharing. We'll jump into the next one. So for this one, this is really um, the, the portion of the study area that goes from the sort of heavy industrial along the western um, bank of the sort of inner harbor, um, and then uh, sort of transitions up towards the CBD, towards the sort of downtown area. Um, and the sort of the question that we wanted to explore here was how can we incentivize a more incremental buffered transition from the heavy industrial west bank, bank into the upland residential and open space uses? Um, where do we preserve and protect industrial and where do we encourage transition over time? So this is really about just handling 
the sort of legacy mixing of residential and industrial land uses, which typically try and keep um, uh, sort of buffered from one another um, and really trying to understand, you know, how, how can we best manage this relationship over time so that each sort of is getting the best outcome. So right now, almost this entire area is um, zoned heavy industrial. Um, and there's portions of it that are zoned for um, the central business district or um, CBD water. Um, there's also sort of peppered in with the heavy industrial. Um, you can see there's the um, uh, rowing club and also a um, marine boat yard. So uh, it's it, you know it's still still a mix even though we have a, you know heavy industrial users are still recreational use of the water in this area. So the first, um, there's really there's just two options here, and they're really just kind of two different approaches. So one is really trying to retain the maximum possible industrial flexibility. Um, so making sure that industrial uses can continue to um, sort of locate here, expand here, um, invest here. Um, and that would sort of in, involve prioritizing heavy industrial along the waterfront, which is really cut off by the, the rail um, and the topography. So it really doesn't have a whole lot of potential to be, uh, it's also fully within the flood zone. So it doesn't have a whole lot of potential to transition to other uses. So this is looking at heavy industrial along that whole sort of waterfront stretch. And then uh, a mixed use heavy industrial and commercial um, that would line that sort of be the next layer upland. And then finally, the, a mixed use light industrial commercial in the area here that sort of gets closest to the CBD and residential areas. So this is sort of the more leaning, more industrial of the two options. And then the second option um, is sort of creating a more um, uh, sort of uh, regular transition um, to sort of get towards something that's closer to the CBD zoning, something that's closer towards uh, residential and mixed use zoning that is less industrial. So it still retains the sort of heavy industrial strip along the waterfront, um, includes a sort of mixed use um, heavy industrial commercial in this area here. And apologies, this is a, actually mislabel. So this would be a uh, mixed use light industrial commercial in this area just along Harbor Avenue mixed use artisan. So that's the sort of the same use that I described in other places that sort of has that sort of artisan industrial um, option, um, but otherwise it's a conventional mis mixed use district. Um, that would be along the sort of area that um, abuts uh, this Matthews Park. Um, and then on the sort of upland side of Harbor Avenue. And then finally neighborhood business for this um, section here, which is currently mostly things like um, auto body shops and other sort of small neighborhood industrial services. So with that, we can launch the poll for this one. So again, the first one is more um, sort of retaining the maximum sort of development rights for industrial users. The second is more about creating a gradual transition that gets more towards residential and CBD um, zoning more sort of quickly. And then this, the second question is the same question that you've seen from the other ones. If you could pr prioritize one public benefit that would be an outcome of the rezoning work in this area, um, what would that be? Okay, we're at just under half. Give everybody a little bit more time. Okay, we'll do another uh, five second countdown. Zero and five. Four, three, two, one. Okay, we'll end poll and share back to you all. It looks like um, there was a pretty significant interest in both, but there was um, a preference overall for scenario two, um, which was sort of a more of a transition um, towards the sort of CBD and residential areas. Um, and then in terms of public benefits, um, it looks like the, um, the top interests were in jobs, development, beautification, and ecology. 
will stop sharing and we have just two more of these and then we'll jump into discussion. So for this area, um, the majority of this area is sort of um, already sort of has uh, pretty similar or continuous zoning, um, but there's a sort of a, a big shift that sort of coincides with this um, sort of lowland area here along Smith Street. Um, and so that's really kind of the central question for this area is um, how can we create a more cohesive and connective experience among the divergent land uses in this area so that East Avenue feels more connected to the water? Um, and what is the role of public realm design, public access and wayfinding in creating this experience? So the second question is really one that we'll explore more in our second public meeting when we're looking more at these sort of urban design questions, um, resiliency and ecological questions. Um, but so for this, uh, for purposes of this meeting, our central question is really kind of how do we unify the sort of land uses along this district? What can we do to kind of manage those relationships and, and sort of what is sort of the preferred future for, for land use in this area? So right now, um, there's sort of this strip of the central business district or central business district water that goes along the waterfront in sort of the lowland area. Um, and then the upland area that's along East Avenue is all has this the custom sort of East Ave Village District mixed use zoning. Um, and you can see here Mill Hill Park um, is sort of is protected open space, but is kind of covered by the East Ave Village District. So it's a, a part of that district. Um, you can see in here we also have you know a lot of active um, use of the water. So you have the the rowing club right here, um, Divine Brothers um, has active use of the waterfront here along their bulkhead and the Norwalk Boat Club. So this is a really rich kind of mix of uses. So the first scenario is sort of the, the more kind of conservative of the two, more or less retaining sort of the existing um, conditions. So that's looking at, um, uh, and this is really more so retaining the, the current land use mix versus the current zoning, right? Because there's a little bit of a misalignment uh, between the way that the, the land is being used now versus what the zoning um, sort of allows. So this would retain heavy industrial in the area where it's currently being used for heavy industrial uses. Um, and otherwise would transition the remainder to mixed use artisan, which is that sort of slightly more flexible mixed use district that allows for artisan industrial um, to uh, be part of the, sort of the retail spaces. Um, so this is would basically retain the sort of potential for this to continue to be a contributing um, set of properties to the industrial um, sort of development base for Norwalk. The other alternative would be to really just see this as a sort of unified um, mixed use artisan district where um, we're looking at a transition over time to lighter industrial uses um, and sort of a more continuous um, sort of public access to the waterfront here. And those are the only two for this. So um, can launch the poll here. So again, looking at either sort of retaining existing um, sort of industrial uses or looking at transition over time to more of a light industrial mixed use artisan um, uh, environment. And you kind of know the drill by now, but the second question is looking at um, what public benefits you would prioritize for this area. You could only choose one. Okay, we're a little over half. Give us a little bit more time. We'll do five, four, three, two, one. That's it. And we'll share it back to you. Um, looks like there's um, a strong preference for the second scenario, which would encourage um, artisan industrial offices and residential. It's the sort of more continuous. Um, of the two and also an interest in the, the sort of retention of the heavy industrial, that was a scenario one, but um, less so. In terms of public benefits, it looks like the, um, 
the strongest interest across the sort of the aggregate of all of you was in ecology um, and then followed by development and water dependent uses. So we'll stop sharing and we'll do our final um, final one here. So this is sort of this little um, sort of pocket that's tucked under the I-95 bridge um, that currently is sort of functioning almost as like a mini marina district. Um, so this um, for this area, our question was, how can we incentivize the continued development of a mutually beneficial mix of water dependent commercial, light industrial, R&D and healthcare facilities um, that ultimately respect and enhance the residential neighborhoods surrounding them. So as you can see here, there's quite a few residential streets that kind of, you know, dead end into this sort of waterfront area. And so that that relationship is sort of an important one is understanding how this sort of um, waterfront area is relating back to the residential that surrounds it. So currently, um, the zoning is a little bit of a hodgepodge here. So we have the um, heavy industrial in this little area here. Again, as a reminder, pivoted with the north is to the right. Um, so we have this heavy industrial here. It transitions to neighborhood business for a portion, which is sort of like your neighborhood retail strip might be a neighborhood business zone. Um, there's a little sliver of B residence, which is probably just a leftover from the highway. And then East Ave Village District extends down to cover this portion here. So the, the sort of questions we were exploring is basically, you know, of the sort of real diversity of, you know, land uses here now, um, kind of what would be a, a preferred future that would um, allow for this diversity, but sort of um, directed over time to something that sort of was more than the sum of the parts. Um, so this first scenario is sort of um, an updated version of the current condition. So the, the current sort of heavy industrial becomes heavy industrial commercial, commercial mixed use. So it allows for a little bit more land use flexibility. The neighborhood business remains as is. And then um, the sort of area here that's sort of in the sort of lowland um, sort of bend in the river um, becomes mixed use light industrial commercial, which is the category that's best so to me you're breaking up a little bit sort of health office thing that exists there so this is a relatively now can you hear us zoe I'll turn my video off. Hey, everybody. We're aware that you can't hear Zoe, and we're working on um, fixing the sound and camera at the moment. Apologies. I think I had a brief internet outage. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> Thanks for hanging with me. Um, Okay, so as I was saying, um, so this is our first scenario. It's basically um, more or less as is conditions with- So you're not, I don't think you're sharing now. You have to reshare. Oh, right. Yep, thank you. Okay, seeing, seeing it now? Good, okay, great, thanks. Takes a village, um, okay. So you've heard enough about this scenario. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> um, so this one basically takes the same um, sort of initial premise of sort of holding on to this um, mixed use heavy industrial commercial area here, but um, sort of swaps the current neighborhood business to be this mixed use light industrial commercial, which would give it a little bit more flexibility for it to become things like a health office lab, um, sort of other light industrial uses that right now would not be allowed in the neighborhood business zone. The next one is really kind of taking across the board saying we really would like this to be a lighter industrial area. We don't want to retain that heavy industrial commercial zone. So this would be across the board looking at this as a light industrial commercial zone still would offer a lot of flexibility but would prevent the heavier industrial uses from um, sort of growing in this area. Then the final option is sort of the reverse of that saying, this is actually a pretty good spot for heavy industrial, 
um, we'd like to retain the flexibility for that to continue to be an area of the city where heavy industrial businesses can contribute to the economy. Um, and uh, we'll kind of, you know, have that as sort of a, a, a single unified zone across the board. Um, so with that, I will, um, we can launch the poll. I'll sort of reiterate flipping through these as we, um, as we do the poll. So as a reminder, the first scenario is really pretty closely matching the current conditions. The second one um, would sort of increase the light industrial um, flexibility, um, eliminating that little neighborhood business zone. Um, the third one would sort of take the whole swath and turn it into the sort of light industrial commercial um, mixed use, which would allow for more R&D and lab type development. And the final one would be um, sort of the most uh, sort of friendly to industrial uses would allow for some of the heavy industrial uses to um, continue in this area. This is shaping up to be a neck and neck poll here. <laughs> this is the tightest one yet. We're almost at half here, give it a little more time. And for the second question, same as all the ones before, we're just looking to understand what your top sort of public benefit would be in this area. We okay, are pretty close, so I'll do another countdown. We'll do five, four, three, two, one. We'll share back. So by not a very large margin, we have scenario two is the, the sort of interim winner here. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep asking questions about this one since it was so tight. Um, so this one um, would mean that we'd have um, retained some um, heavy industrial commercial, but overall sort of shift to allow for more light industrial um, development in the area um, with our sort of R&D and lab focus. The runner up is scenario three, which would be entirely light industrial um, mixed use. And then um, there's also a fair amount of interest in the sort of current conditions. In terms of the public benefits, it looks like um, there was a lot of interest in ecological work in this area um, and also in sort of increasing development oppor opportunities and tourism amenities and jobs with uh, water dependent uses being sort of a, a runner up there. Great, so thanks for bearing with us with all of those um, polls. I know it can be a little bit mechanical, but it's a great way for us to get feedback from all of you in it quickly. Um, so with that, we're gonna transition into the breakout groups. Um, we have kind of three prompts or like guiding questions for you to help you um, sort of get started. But really the, what we're trying to achieve is just we want to hear from you anything that you felt like you couldn't share in the format of the polls that we just did, um, things that are more subtle, more site specific, um, sort of things that you'd like to see incorporated in the sort of land use future for um, the sort of the waterfront that you didn't see reflected in what we shared um, today. Um, so the first prompt that we have for you is around transition areas. So this is really thinking about um, if there's any particular areas across sort of the, the study area that we're focusing on um, where you feel like there's um, significant tension or conflict um, between the existing uses there. Um, and this will just help us understand kind of where to focus our energies, areas where there's maybe a little bit more um, sort of fine tuning to do to get that mix right and help to manage those transitions well. Um, for the second prompt here, this is really just as a follow-up to the polling that we just did. Um, for the five sort of districts that we just went through, um, is there anything that you'd like to discuss further? Are there any locations where you think our scenarios didn't quite capture what you think should happen on the waterfront? Um, and then finally, um, sort of right at the beginning of the land use scenario section, I went through all of those development test fits in the marine commercial um, zone. Um, there's obviously a lot of sort of detail oriented questions that can be asked about those. Um, so the last question is really just an open invitation if you'd like to discuss the details of those kind of development typologies a little bit more. Um, 
you have any clarifying questions for us um, or any kind of design features or public benefits that you'd really like to see us explore further in those development test fits. Um, and I will now just give you a very brief kind of like overview of the, the tool that we're going to use to record your comments as you're sharing them with us in the breakout rooms, just so you have a sense of, you know, how it works. Um, so we're going to use basically a digital whiteboard tool. So it's just like if you were in a um, sort of in-person meeting, we might have like a, um, you know, a, a notepad out taking notes with you. So this is just a, a sort of a digital way of doing the same thing. Um, so we can add sticky notes and comment bubbles to sort of as you're talking. So if you can just, if you have a site specific comment, you can just direct us sort of where you want us, you know, what area you're speaking about, and we'll be able to kind of make a comment in that area to help us remember the spot that you are, you're sort of um, sharing feedback about. Um, it'll just help us have a clearer record of, of the conversation. Um, and we'll just kind of walk through the, the prompts that, you know, I just shared. And it's really just an open sort of invitation to you guys to share with us the sort of the things that you think are most important for us to be keeping in mind as we're going to the next stage. Okay. So a quick question for the breakout room facilitators. Do you have those three questions in the yes. row board? So okay. each of the um, uh, sort of, I guess you could call them stations, have the sort of the prompt um, written out at the top of them. Okay, got it. Thank you. And just as a reminder to all of the facilitators, please um, record your breakout room. So right when you get in, if you just press record and record it to your personal computer, um, that way we'll have a record of them. Um, the recording of the main meeting room does not uh, carry over into the breakout room, so. Another qu another question, Zoe, if people still use the chat, do all the chat comments go to the general meeting chat? I don't believe they do. Um, so if you can also, if there is significant activity in your chat, if you can save that chat um, at the end of your breakout group um, discussion, that would be great. Any last questions from our facilitators before we disband? And Zoe, have the Spanish speaking participants been given instructions about which breakout room they go to? I'm scrolling up um, to see. Um, so, yes, yeah, so all of, so for those of you who are Spanish speakers, um, I, the group that I'm facilitating will be um, uh, sort of we'll have our interpreter with us and I also speak Spanish so um, para los que hablan español que se puede um, continuar a la uh, sala de um, uh, Zoe uh, para hablar en español durante los uh, breakout discussions <laughs> that's about the limit of my Spanish apologies um, okay so Michelle if you'd like to initiate the break out, I think we will all disband. Hi there, I guess this is my breakout group. Um, trying to see how many people are here. We have a pretty good number. I, I see Michelle from the city. Um, and then I see, um, it looks like five or six other people. And I think, um, I think this is still the main, it says, and when I look on my end, it says you didn't join your room yet. Who, me? Yeah, this is the still on the main. Uh, let's see here. What I, I clicked on it. Should I join my own meeting, number three? 
Yeah. Okay. See if that goes. <laughs> And then there's still a few of you that need to join um, the right breakout room. Uh, Um, and Harbor Loop um, that will take place uh, on February 9th. So um, look out for that. It's like another great way to sort of be engaged in the conversations about the waterfront. Um, and finally, um, you know, keep an eye out for the next public meeting in April of 2022. Um, that's this April. Um, and that's, we'll be discussing in greater detail the public access framework, the capital investment framework, and preferred land use scenarios like we discussed today. That's it. And Zoe and Lauren, Michelle, if if people want to follow up with email comments or suggestions, is there? Oh, there we go. It's Thanks. almost like we planned that. Yeah. Um, so, so if you, then, Zoe, as I mentioned in our breakout room, if there's any way at all, I mean, April is three months from now, and it's also in the last twenty five percent of your final planning phase on your timeline, so appreciate that you want to move things forward and you got a lot going on between now and then but that's a three month la lag and it would be awesome if you could think about possibly an additional meeting between now and then i'll take my my i'll go mute now thanks on we'll we'll discuss with the city and see what we can come up with um there's a there's a bunch of stuff that um oftentimes when we do public comment we sort of leave it open for a while about with the same questions because it takes a little bit of time for word to get out um so we will um, we will keep the current sort of feedback channels open during that time period, and we'll see what else we can do to kind of increase participation between now and the next meeting. Um, so with that, I want to encourage anybody if you have any additional comments that you weren't able to share tonight or that come up as you're sort of thinking about this in your um, free time, <laughs> uh, that you can feel free to reach out to the City of Norwalk team. Um, their emails are listed here. Um, and you can also keep in touch with the project um, via the Norwalk Tomorrow um, website. And um, we really appreciate your time. Sure, and I have for... one, little, one little last shameless plug. If yeah, there's ahead, anybody Steve. who is um, interested in serving on one of the city's land use commissions, there's vacancies with the Zoning Board of Appeals, Conservation Commission, um, Bike Walk, or others, please shoot me an email and I'll be happy to follow up with you. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Zoe. I want to thank Zoe for <laughs> taking us through a lot of content this evening um, within, you know, a fairly compressed amount of time. So, my pleasure. Um, thanks all for, for your time, and we'll we'll leave you to return to your your families and your evenings. Um, so, thank you so much. Thanks, Zoe. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Zoe, thank you. Good night, Tim. Good night, Tim.